So Microsoft has released a thinking version of its 5.4 large language model. It's got chain of thought built into it, which means it does some thinking before it finally gives you the answer to the question that you asked it. Now, it's an amazing large language model in that it's the first one that I'd be able to run locally that answers one of my very tricky logical questions and it gets it right and it's running on local hardware. Now, in this video, I want to tell you a little bit about 5.4 and then show you how you can install and run it on a Raspberry Pi and then also how you can run it on other PCs including gaming PCs that have got good graphics cards uh, an RTX graphics card of some kind. So if you want to find out more please let me explain. Okay, so let's jump in to look at Microsoft's 5.4 mini reasoning. So Microsoft has added chain of thought to its 5.4 models. They were previously released and now we have the reasoning versions. Now there are actually three models in the series. The 5.4 reasoning model is a 14 billion parameter model. That means it's 11 gigabytes uh, of RAM needed and it's trained via supervised fine tuning of the 5.4 models that all existed but they're using reasoning demonstrations that came from OpenAI's O3 Mini. So basically they're asking O3 Mini to do something, looking at that output and then fine tuning, kind of adding extra training to the 5.4 model so that it emulates the way that O3 Mini does its uh, chain of thought. There's also the 5.4 Reasoning Plus. Again, that's built upon 5.4 Reasoning, but trained even more. In fact, its chain of thought is longer. It will actually output about 1.5 times more tokens than 5.4 to deliver a higher accuracy. So the chain of thought gives you extra capabilities without necessarily having to increase the number of parameters in the model. And then finally, we have 5.4 Mini Reasoning, which is the one that we're going to be focusing on today because it's only 3.8 billion parameters, which means it's 3.2 gig. So that is a much more reasonable size and you can start running that, you know, even in a four gigabyte a GPU, you can get that running, you can get this running on a Raspberry Pi. And that is, this one is slightly different. This is fine tuned with synthetic data generated by DeepSeq R1. So the other two models are trained by what comes out of O3 Mini. This one is trained out of stuff generated by DeepSeq R1. Now, a few things to note, all the testing, we're gonna be using the four bit quantized versions. It can run on a Raspberry Pi and on PCs. Uh, You'll get more performance if you use an RTX 30 or greater uh, GPU. Now, thinking models always output more than non-thinking models because they output this chain of thought. So even if actually the final answer is only just a, a sentence or two or even a yes and no, there's going to be a whole load more tokens that get output while it's doing the thinking, and that takes time. So all that token output in itself uh, takes time. So although you get a short answer, the thinking process in itself uh, makes the uh, the total number of outputs uh, tokens process more. Uh, and there is a danger with these thinking models; they can overthink. And I'll talk more about that uh, in a moment. Now, the big bit of news for me is this: I have this question that I've been throwing at these language models for a long time now. Alice has five brothers; she also has three sisters. How many sisters does Alice's brother have? And the quick answer that most small models give you is three. Even early versions of GPT-4 would give you three. Uh, some versions of Grok and Gemini would give you three early ones. Now they tend to uh, be a bit better today. The thinking models like O3 Mini give you the correct answer, which is, of course is four. But I've never been able to get one running on my local PC, on a laptop or on a, a Raspberry Pi that can give me the right answer. Well, the amazing thing is this 3.8 billion parameter model gives the right answer. By using that trait chain of thought thinking, it actually does give you the correct answer, which means this is much, much better at logic solving problems uh, than previous models. Okay, here we are on a system with an RTX 30 series GPU, and we are asking, notice there the Pi 4 mini reasoning model, the Alice question, and it's going through the problem, looking at all the different possibilities, trying to work out where the trick is in our question. And once it does finish that thinking stage, just like normal, it will then give us the final answer. 
Okay, here now is coming up the final answer. Each brother shares the same set of female siblings. Since there are four daughters in the family, and it's worked out, this is the important thing, Alice and her three sisters, then it says the total number of sisters of Alice's brother is four. So we're going to talk about the performance. As I said, you can run this on a Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to show you how to install it and show you it running on a Raspberry Pi uh, in a moment. But if you use a Raspberry Pi 5 with four CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, I'm using mine with an NVMe drive on it. You can get about 2.2 tokens a second, which is not very fast, but it does run. So if you ask it for an essay outline, for example, if you ask it for an essay outline of the Battle of the Bulge, which is one of the questions I do ask them, then that is going to take about 16 minutes to give you an answer, 2,200 uh, tokens output, but it does work. And if you ask it the Alice question, it takes about 10 minutes to solve it. But again, it does give you the right answer. Now, if I run it on my main laptop, which is the MSI GF63 laptop with the i5 12th generation in it, 12 CPU core, 64 gigs of RAM and an RTX 2050, but that's an integrated one. So there's no dedicated VRAM. And I have a review of this laptop here on this channel when I bought it. Uh, and that gives you 13 tokens a second. So quite faster than the Raspberry Pi, but you've got the GPU here. And that means that the essay outline question, Battle of the Bulge, will take about two and a half, two minutes, 40 seconds for the same thing, around 2,150 tokens, including the thinking output. Now you can also run it on much, much larger machines. So for example, if you run it on a machine with an RTX 3060 Ti with eight gigabytes of RAM in it, well, once you run the mini one, well, then that's going to be running at 90 tokens a second, including all the thinking, which means your Battle of the Bulge essay comes out in just 18 seconds. So if you've got a decent gaming PC with an RTX 30 series in it, an RTX 3060, a 3070, 3090, or up into the 40 series, you're going to get some good results of this. Now, there's also the thinking 14 billion parameter one that I did mention earlier on. Now, if you run that on this model with an 8 gigabyte GPU in it, the, the speed crashes down to 1.75 tokens a second. So your essay takes 25 minutes to come out. Why? Because that's an 11 gig model. So three gigs of it is still running from main memory and not from the RAM in the GPU. So that really becomes the bottleneck and it really does slow it right down. But if you bump up to something with an RTX 4060 Ti with, let's say, 16 gigabytes of memory in it, then that 14 billion parameter model can run at 22 tokens a second, which means you're going to get uh, two minutes, two and a half minutes for the Battle of the Bulge essay outline. In this case, it gave even more 3,329 tokens. So if you have a really good uh, graphics card with lots of VRAM, 16 gigs, then you're even going to be able to run the bigger model, the 14 billion parameter one, and actually get some really good results out of that. Okay, so to install it, and we're going to install this on a Raspberry Pi, you can do this on Mac OS, you can do it on Windows as well. You need to run this command here, this curl command, which downloads the installation script uh, and then runs it. So basically, you do curl and then pipe that into shell. That's what this bit at the end means. So it runs the installation script. And then you say, oh, Llama, run Pi4 Mini Reasoning to actually get it to run. And oh, Llama is clever enough that it will download it if you don't have it, and then it will run it. Okay, then, so here I am on a Raspberry Pi 5. We're going to start a terminal up here. And now we need to cut and paste that command that's shown on the Olama website. And that will go ahead and install the latest version if you've got one on there already or a new version if you haven't. And as you can see, it's detecting this is a Raspberry Pi. It's downloading the ARM64 bundle so it knows it's running 64-bit uh, ARM Linux on here. Okay, that's finished downloading. Uh, it's just noted there's no uh, NVIDIA or AMD GPU uh, connected to it running CPU only mode. That's absolutely fine. We now need to uh, actually run the reasoning model and you can do that by saying Olama run 54 mini reasoning, which is the name of the model. You get that model name from the Olama website. It will go ahead and download that and then it will run it. Okay, so it's finished downloading. As you can see, the prompt is there, it's now running. Let's ask it a very simple question. Yes or no, one plus one is equal to two. Now, this is the thing about these models is that because they are thinking models, you'd get a very quick answer from a small uh, model that's um, not using thinking. You get the think tag and then it starts to go through. Well, 
uh, let me think about this. I know that addition is one of the most basic. And so even before it comes up to give you that answer to that question, it's going to go through lots of this chain of thought before it gives you that final answer. But there you go. Microsoft's uh, Phi 4 mini reasoning model running on a Raspberry Pi. And just for complete, as you can see now that it's finished the uh, thinking stage, so it finally gives you that answer. Uh, yes, it's true. So there you go. That's just showing you the way it thinks and the way it works. So what are these uh, models good for? Well, correcting spelling and grammar of text, they'll do very easily. Of course, other models can do this as well. But I'm just saying what you can do with this this thinking model, sentiment analysis, look at the following customer reviews, tell me which one is the most negative, and then you could then add those to the bottom of the prompt. Brilliantly doing that. Ideation, generate five eye-catching YouTube video titles for my Python tutorials. You might want to give it more information about what kind of tutorials, but it will, it will do that kind of stuff. Summarize the following article. You might give it a thousand word article. Ask it to summarize it for you, it will do that. Rewriting stuff, rewrite this paragraph to make it simpler to understand, improve the flow and clarity, it will do that uh, as well. And you can also get it to write Python programs, write a Python program that takes the phrase Gary explains, counts the total number of alphabetic characters in that phrase, multiply that by count by seven, convert it to hexadecimal, reverse the hexadecimal numbers, it will produce uh, a script like that following several different steps, give you the answer. You can run that locally on your PC and it will give you the correct answer. I've tried it, gives you the correct answer, no problem at all. So what we find is that for spelling and grammar, sentiment analysis, simple coding tasks, ideation, summaries and rewrites, essay outlines, logic puzzles, including the Alice question, which was the whole point. It all works great on this local model that you can run on your PC. And I did mention that it can overthink. Well, for example, if you just ask it a pure history question, I ask it, list all the wives of Henry VIII and the dates of their marriages. Because it's outputting so much text, looking at all the different wives, it can actually start to kind of get itself confused in the chain of thought and start to say, well, actually, who was this one and, and why was that one? And then it can disappear down a rabbit hole, really. And in fact, when I tried, it actually gave me the wrong, completely the wrong answer because it kind of dived down a rabbit hole and, and really didn't recover in its thinking. Now, there are other models that you might want to use just for pure history because that's really about compressing lots of knowledge into a small number of parameters. So we're not talking about the chain of thought process. But if you use the bigger models, I'm sure you get better answers. Um, and of course, there are other models that you could use together with this. Of course, you could use some kind of internet search. You can use um, other kind of techniques to get that data and then ask it to kind of process it somehow. But just worth noting, it can overthink if you're asking it just for information retrieval, which means it doesn't really need to use that chain of thought, then it still uses the chain of thought for information retrieval and then kind of maybe can kind of disappear down a rabbit hole. Okay, so there you have it, the Phi 4 thinking uh, model running on everything from a Raspberry Pi right up to a gaming PC and giving us good answers. Love to hear what you think about this model in the comments below. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then please stick around and subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.